Dairy again. Yeah, that's right. And so there's such a strong correlation between the mucus that's, right. that's formed that's right. and the dairy. Um, and as Ann was saying, it's meant for a cow. It's not meant for the humans. Right. And we're the having sex. Mm -hmm. They want to take the mm -hmm. relationship to another mm -hmm. level, but they don't want to be intimate yet mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of having sexual relations. Hello and welcome to Right Decisions. I'm Tammy Moore Johnson, your host. It is indeed my pleasure to come your, to your homes weekly, the show that's created to provide tools for success. Helping people to be successful in their marriage is something dear to my heart. We address marriage often on Right Decisions for it's something that the Lord told me to do. Today, we're talking about providing healing from within your marriage. Marriage is meant to be the most intimate, fulfilling relationship that two people can experience. However, only 60% of people are happy in their unions, according to the National Opinion Research Center in the United States. The average marriage lasts 12.2 years. Many people are married, but do not have the emotional fulfillment that they thought they would receive when they took their vows. However, there is hope for marriages. Marriages can thrive. We are going to give some, you some strategies as we discuss healing within your marriage. Here to help me discuss this topic is Reese Palmer, a clinical psychotherapist from Palmer Counseling and Consultants. Welcome, Reese, to Right Decision. Thank you so much for Thank helping you. me discuss this very, very yes, important yes, topic that can help so many marriages. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Tammy. Absolutely, to be absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times, you know, churches and uh, uh, different organization give strategies to married couples, such yeah. as, and I've done it too, mm -hmm. as such as, you know, have a date night. You know, make sure you talk, and which are good things sure, to do. Sure. But if they are not growing as one, they can just be going through the motions. Sure, and often, unfortunately, a lot of times that's what happens to married couples, particularly if they've mm -hmm. been married for a number of years. You know, the, those those same intentional things that they did perhaps earlier on in their relationship, right. they're no longer doing. Mm -hmm. and, and not because it's necessarily something that they mean to do, but over the years, you know, with uh, with children and careers and, and, and sometimes, unfortunately, health problems and other things come into the picture, they sort of kind of get away from doing those things that feed the mm -hmm. marriage relationship and make it stronger. We can go through, because let me tell you this, mm -hmm. when my husband and I first got married, we could tell people who were newlyweds, who would go out to eat, yes. and, the, <laughs> and the ones who've been married for a while, because yeah. they wouldn't engage in conversation. That's right. So you can mm -hmm. go to a dinner, you can go to, in a movie you can't talk anyway, right. but you can go to dinner, if you're sitting across and you're looking at the phone, or you're not engaging in a conversation, that's right. what good does that do? That's right, and, and that's what happens. I, I think, again, you get used to each other, mm -hmm. and, yes. and that same level of connectedness yes. is not there, and we get distracted by our phones, we get yes. distracted by our laptops, tops, the kids, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really does require a consistent, intentional effort yes. on the part of both parties mm -hmm. in order to keep the marriage strong and growing and, and really staying healthy. So yeah. how do we do that? How do the yeah. Bible says that they became, two became one. Yes. So in the scriptures it said, you know, you, you cleave and you leave your mother and you, yeah. you cleave to your wife. Yeah. Um, but they become one flesh. Yeah. How does a couple, you know, forget the surface stuff. Right. How does a couple become one flesh? Right. I think the first step, um, at least in my mind, is that it begins with each individual mm -hmm. um, being very, very um, um, focused on what they need to do to bring the relationship mm -hmm. to the place that God has called for it to be. And so that means I have to look at myself. Yes. A lot of times it's easy to look at our spouse mm -hmm. and point out the flaws and the challenges that our spouse has. Mm -hmm. But we're, it's a much more difficult um, mm -hmm. task to really look myself in the mirror and to be 
praying about those things that I know that I should be working on, that I should be improving as mm -hmm. a spouse, as a husband or a wife. And so I think it always begins with looking at yourself first and, and being honest. You know, there's that old, um, I think it was Shakespeare that said, to thine own self be true. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I have to be truthful with myself mm -hmm. and be honest um, because I can't show up in my marriage, in my relationship for my spouse mm. if I'm not being honest with myself first. I, there's no way I can be honest with my spouse mm. if I'm not honest with myself That's first. a good point. And yeah. sometimes I think people have a hard time seeing themselves. So, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And that's when they need to depend on their spouse to say, hey, you know, mm. am I giving you what you need? Or But sometimes we just don't do that. Sure. You know, you mentioned about sometimes they get longer in marriage, let's say 15 years plus, mm -hmm. you know, people get used to, you do your thing, I do my thing, and yes. we'll meet back. You know, yes. you know how sometimes the celebrities say it's cheaper to keep her? Yeah. You know, I yeah. think with ordinary <laughs> couples, I think sometimes it's like, okay, we've been together too long. We invested too much. We're used to each other. So we're going to put up with each other, right. but they're not emotionally fulfilled. Yeah. And then a lot of times they get that fulfillment from outside. Yes. Talk about that just a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's what happens a lot when you're not really focused on what's mm -hmm. what's happening for you uh, personally in the relationship. That's why I said it's so important to always understand what's going on with yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and not always um, start with your spouse as to where the problem might be coming from. Um, but yes, when we when we begin to um, not make those same efforts to connect, um, our interests may be drawn to other places. Mm -hmm. And if there is an emotional disconnect, there is a lack of intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, it doesn't necessarily lead to you know a physical relationship that's, right. that's an extramarital mm -hmm. relationship. Sometimes it's an emotional connection with a coworker mm -hmm. or perhaps even someone you go to church with. Right, you know? And exactly. so that's what happens when we're not being very focused on creating that mm -hmm. consistent bond and that attachment. And a lot of times it just, it takes work um, it takes honesty and communication, mm -hmm. and sometimes couples don't always know how to do that. And so you do sometimes have to seek out, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, wise counsel and godly guidance and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Christian counseling like mm -hmm. I provide for couples. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you do need to know when it's time for you to, to really get Absolutely. some help to get you back on track. Mm -hmm. and, and it's better sooner than later, you Absolutely. know, because you don't want that resentment to build up mm -hmm. and you don't want the, the devil to get a foot hole That's in right. your relationship oh, yes. and before you realize it you're pulling uh, further and further apart um, and then you wake up one day and you don't even recognize your mm -hmm. spouse anymore mm -hmm. in your marriage any longer mm -hmm. and so that's why it's so important that you're constantly praying uh, for and with your spouse that's right. spouse and paying attention to what's going on in your mm -hmm. relationship and get the help when you need it that's absolutely mm -hmm. and and you mentioned about the emotional yes. fulfillment mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily have to be negative like a uh, mm extramarital affair. Right. We're not talking about affair, right. but we're talking about that, you know, let's just say you're in an organization um, with your brothers or something. Right. And so you go out, you bond with your brothers, you know, mm -hmm. for the females, it could be a sorority, it could be anything. That's correct. All right, so you're getting, you have good friends, so okay, I'm getting my, I get, I get my emotional fulfillment from that. Right. But then you come home and you might not connect with your spouse at home. Mm. And so even that I think could cause some problems within the marriage. Cause the Bible absolutely. said what? Mm -hmm. your, or our vows say what? Forsake all, all others. others. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that would be your job. Well, we can yeah. hit that too. You oh, know, yeah. Cause absolutely. sometimes people get their fulfillment in their the professional job. work. Absolutely. And then that becomes what they connect with yeah. and then they're neglecting the spouse at home. Yeah. So let's hit that real quick yeah. here about that forsaken all others yeah. and what that entails. Well, what that entails, and you've already touched on some of them already, <laughs> Tim, but um, I think one of the things that comes to mind for me that is really difficult is that includes family. Mm, you know, that's good, so you good have point. to also yes. make sure that you're creating a healthy boundary between you and your in-laws and your extended family Absolutely. members. You know, Absolutely. And it's, and it's not that we don't love our family members, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, when you marry, that becomes your primary family. You become in one. That's in right. order to become one That's right. with that purpose that God created you for, right. you literally have to do be seen together. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, you know? And and, and that, that does require uh, uh, again some uh, some awareness that 
as you grow as a couple, there's, there's times where it's just going to need to be you and your spouse. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that means even with children. Yes. Uh, the children you know, need to go to the sitters or mm. go to grandmas or someone so that you have that time for just you and your spouse. And that time has to be protected. It has to be kept sacred Absolutely. because that's how you continue to strengthen that bond. Have that intimacy. Absolutely. That's how you grow Absolutely. together. Yeah. So we're going to take a break. Okay. And we'll come back. We're going to talk about, again, how to continue to grow sure. together. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Right Decisions is aired on the Fox Network in the following counties. Richland, Calhoun, Lexington, Fairfield, Kershaw, Saluda, Lee, Sumter, Clarendon, Orangeburg, and Newberry. Help impact the communities with a premise to make right decisions by supporting the program's platform. For more information, call 803-348-6517. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about marriage, healing from within. Mm -hmm. Now, before the break, we, talk, we talked about that it could be other issues that come up with emotional fulfillment outside, right. not necessarily something negative with mm -hmm. um, having an affair with the opposite sex. It could be an organization, it could be a job. So and there could be some other things that you were mentioning during a break. You wanna talk about that a little bit? Sure, I, I think that there are lots of different things that can take the attention and the focus our focus away from our spouse and our mm -hmm. relationship. And um, there may be some things that we're actually avoiding mm -hmm. in that, and we're kind of avoiding the, the intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of times that's you know not something we're fully aware of, that we're actually avoiding it by staying busy at work or mm -hmm. always doing something with the sorority or the fraternity or always doing something with our family, right. ex, you know, extended family members, but not really always showing up in our marriage for our spouses the way they need us to be mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. talk, talk about that. So, what are some of the issues yeah. why people don't become or they avoid sure. that emotional intimacy? Well, I think one of the biggest issues that um, un often um, go unnoticed is um, any past trauma mm -hmm. that um, a person has experienced. Um, a lot of times that manifests in us behaviorally in the relationship and we're not really aware of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, any type of trauma can have a significant impact mm -hmm. on our ability to connect emotionally, to be number one, first in touch with our own emotions yeah. um, because uh, that trauma likely caused uh, this response that we have to uh, self-protect and to protect ourselves emotionally. And so while that may have been required and necessary while the, uh, the trauma was happening mm -hmm. and we were going through that painful mm -hmm. experience, we are now in a safe, loving uh, relationship. And so that doesn't serve us any longer. We don't need that survival skill any longer, right. but we still employ it, unfortunately. And we're not aware that we still have a little bit of an emotional protective, mm -hmm. protective wall mm -hmm. up. And so that's what it, it's really about. It's, it's about fear of being hurt again and being vulnerable. Talk about yeah. some of the trauma that they could have experienced. Sure. You know, general, generally, I think you mentioned sure. before, like childhood, a parent's Absolutely. not, can you get hit some yeah, of Yeah, sure, a lot of those, um, are, are what I would consider um, attachment injuries, things mm -hmm. that we experienced in our earliest relationship with our uh, relationships with our attachment figures. And ideally those were our parents, right. uh, mom and dad, those are uh, the first people that we form an attachment and a bond and, and a relationship mm -hmm. with uh, from the time we're little babies. Mm -hmm. And if those relationships, for whatever reason, those uh, attachment forming um, experiences were not good, they mm. were, um, uh, traumatic or there were uh, issues going on with our parents or whoever our caregiver was, uh, such as perhaps there was a substance abuse problem mm. or maybe they had mental health problems mm -hmm. or, or maybe there was abuse or neglect um, that we experienced as children. Mm -hmm. um, any type of abuse or neglect, sexual abuse, physical abuse, anything mm. that would have interrupted that normal attachment could very well impact us later on in our relationships, um, in particular in our marriage when we've become intimately close to someone. And again, so those things can come back to haunt us. Do you us. think the person, the spouse who may have had these issues when they were growing up, mm -hmm. do you think they're aware of it? Is yeah. it intentional? Or they may not know yeah. because they're in such a protective mood, yeah. or mode I should say, mm -hmm. from 
protecting themselves as a child. What it do is, you think? Yeah, it is not uncommon at all, Tammy, for folks to be completely unaware yes. that mm -hmm. a trauma that they experienced either in childhood, uh, adolescence, or even in a early, uh, early adulthood mm. is something that's manifesting currently in their relationship. Mm. And so a lot of what I do when I do couples counseling mm -hmm. is, to, is to really get a, a good mm -hmm. history and understand um, those early relationships, mm -hmm. those past romantic relationships, and really understand what type of trauma these individuals may have experienced right. and what type of injuries emotionally that they've experienced. So I have a, a better idea of what may be happening today, how gotcha. that's manifesting in the relationship today. Right. And maybe that's what's causing the emotional disconnect or the what we call numbing out, emotionally mm. numb and not available emotionally to our partner. So do you think that if a spouse has it, let's just say it's the male, yeah. you know, because I'm a female, I'm gonna say the guys. <laughs> pick on the guys, <laughs> That's right? right pick on the guys. Uh -huh. Let's just say it's the husband. Let's yeah. say the husband is having the issues with intimacy with yes. the wife. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the wife then becomes protective and mm -hmm. go in a protective mode and, sure. and numb out and, and, and become tough or, sure. you know, talk about that a little bit. Well, I think that, you know, we, we, we enter into our relationships with what are called attachment styles, mm -hmm. uh, the way that we connect and bond with our attachment figures. And, and all of the things that we have experienced as children and past relationships, um, they kind of shape an attachment style mm -hmm. for us in relationships. And so if I'm the, you know, uh, the, the husband and I'm more kind of reserved and I'm more um, withdrawn emotionally, uh, but my wife is actually more of the pursuer. She's mm -hmm. the one that seeks that connection, that wants to communicate on a deeper emotional level. You know, if I've had some type of uh, trauma, uh, it, it may make it feel very frightening, very mm -hmm. scary for me to open myself up fully and be vulnerable mm -hmm. because I don't have experience with that going positively. Yes, yes. And, and so I may equate being vulnerable and open mm -hmm. with, um, with pain. Mm. And, and, and emotional, That's a good point. Yes. yeah, mm -hmm. and so and so we have to be very uh, um, be re very careful uh, not to sort of jump to prejudging that yes, the person's just good. cold or they're just you know um, you know not wanting that connection. Mm -hmm. Frequently, um, that's that's what we all want. Honestly, mm -hmm. you know, we're 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 wired, hardwired. Mm -hmm. uh, God created us for those attachments. Yes, absolutely. And so and so if there is something that did occur early. In, in, in life, in our childhood, or in our past relationships, we, we, we really need to, to work through that and understand that so that we can be present for our spouse. Even though they're not created, because God said it's not good for man to be alone. Yes. So, you know, we have, he wants us to have the emotion of connection. Mm -hmm. But do you think that if they have that trauma experience, that it could be buried so deeply yes. that they have learned to function yes. without having that connection? Yes. Do you think that happens? I think that happens very frequently, that they're mm -hmm. not even aware that that um, that, mm -hmm. that numbness is there, that that that's sort of just mm -hmm. a little bit of a distance. You know, mm -hmm. you can kind of come this far, but no further. Mm -hmm. And they're not really fully aware of that. Now your partner will be aware of That's it right. because they sense that disconnect or they mm -hmm. sense that there's a holding back of a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you're married, there isn't supposed to be that any absolutely. holding back. Right. You know, that's right. not the the two becoming one, one. flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, to answer your question, Tammy, I think that can happen and does happen, unfortunately, quite mm -hmm. frequently, where they're not at all aware that they um, are taking these protective measures um, in the relationship. And so mm. that's why it's so important um, to, to even uh, trust the feedback from your spouse. Mm, and a, a lot of point. times it, we don't want to hear sort of those things that, that are negative from our mm -hmm. spouse. But, you know, when Ephesians 4 says, speak the truth in love. love. And right. so mm -hmm. if I can receive that from my spouse, then that says, okay, how can I fix this about Absolutely. myself and work on it? Because it's not only going to bless my, my mm -hmm. spouse and my marriage, it's going to bless me individually as and well. Then I, and I think also, too, if you have children, Children, Absolutely. You know, you're modeling, then you're modeling yes. the correct behavior Absolutely. for your children because you don't want a cycle of that. That's right. You know, if, you know, and then we're still talking about marriage and healing from within because sure. we're saying that it can come from deep within. That's right. There's something from your childhood that needs to be corrected mm -hmm. or just not maybe corrected, but, but vent it out, vent it out, you know, get processed. it outside. Yeah, we call process. it process. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you tell me, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Sure. When people get married, they emulate what they saw 
the parents do. Oh, absolutely. So it could be a cycle. Absolutely. If they don't correct this now. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's another one of those price processes that happens um, beneath our conscious awareness. Mm. We're, not, we're, not sh we're not aware that we're playing out some of the same relationship dynamics that we saw with mom and dad, mm -hmm. okay? We're not aware that we're playing out, you know, some of the same uh, negative interactional patterns, whether it be, you know, um, shutting down and avoiding any type of difficult conversation, uh, whether, you know, some emotions, we got the, um, uh, implied message that we don't talk about certain things yeah. or we don't allow ourselves to feel certain mm -hmm. things uh, whether it was you know a uh, a pattern of of uh, intimate partner violence or domestic mm -hmm. violence there was a lot of high emotional you know energy and and, and, mm -hmm. and, and anger was was one of those things and so we learn those things by the environment because we are in fact a product of our environments to, to a great degree. And I think mm -hmm. just people knowing this, yes. that'll help them look at their spouse in a different way. Yes. They won't take it personally. Yes. This is good. Mm -hmm. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. Excellent. Hi, I'm Tammy Moore Johnson from Right Decisions. Thank you so much for tuning in to our weekly show. If you like our platform and what I stand for, then please like us on Facebook is Right Decision with Tammy Moore Johnson. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, Right Decisions with Tammy Moore Johnson. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about marriage, healing from within. Mm -hmm. Reese, before we left from the break, we really talked about how it's the, the spouse shouldn't take it personal yes. when they see that their spouse is not being mm -hmm. emotional, connecting emotionally, mm -hmm. but look a little deeper because it might be something going on from within from that person's childhood. Sure, absolutely. And Tammy, that can be, you know, a lot easier uh, said oh, than done. Absolutely. Yeah, it can be yeah, very yeah. hard because that may be triggering something in your spouse. If they mm -hmm. came, you know, from a family that was very unaffirming or cold and mm -hmm. they didn't get the affection and the love. And so they were seeking that. Yes. They put all of that emotional yes. investment in you right. as their spouse to provide mm -hmm. what they did not get as a mm -hmm. child or in past relationships. Um, but it is critical that yeah. they try as, m as much as they can to understand one another. You help each other. That's you right. communicate. Keep that intimacy. That's right. Go deeper. Yeah. Don't just go out to dinner. <laughs> Talk. That's yeah. right. Be curious. And <laughs> I think right. that's what happens. A lot of times we kind of lose that curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, and, the, and that during that courting season, you know, we want to know everything yeah, about each other, right? <laughs> but I say that, you know, the longer you're together, you really need to con continue to work on your PhD in your spouse. You mm -hmm. need to know everything about them, mm -hmm. right? And so you know exactly what makes them tick. You know exactly what triggers them, what their mm -hmm. vulnerable spots are, where they feel insecure, and you cover them. You mm -hmm. understand those things. I love right? that. Cover them. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because they are your brother or sister. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, yeah. And, a, and the love covers a multitude of, of sins. Sin. That's right. So as, as Christians, as believers, mm -hmm. we need to be like, okay, pray, of course. It's hard not to take offense. That's but right. But cover them and pray and be one with this. Because right. what God has put together, let no man separate or put That's asunder. Right. That's right. And, and that even ourselves. But yeah. let no man. Put us under. That's right. That's right. And I think that that's the the ultimate um, key ingredient to keeping a marriage together. It's just the idea that no matter what happens, you are there for each other, mm. and it's not going to always be easy. And I think that is the critical uh, uh, recipe ingredient mm -hmm. for uh, a marriage that is not just um, you know a long lasting marriage, mm -hmm. but truly fulfilling and satisfying is always, always making that recommitment mm, to be there for good. your spouse. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. um, but, but that's okay. Um, and, and we know from where our help comes and we continue right. to focus on, on the help that we know we, that we have through our helper, through our comforter. That's right. It'll help us through those difficult mm, times to, to be patient. Um, mm. But in the meantime, I can reflect on myself and what I'm, what can I do to make the situation better? I love better. it. I love yeah. it. It's a mm -hmm. journey. You know, it is. When you were talking, mm -hmm. I was thinking about this couple who um, I often see and they do marriage ministry. It's beautiful. Been yeah. married 30 plus years. Yes. But they'll say in a minute, hey, 
you see the glory, but mm, you don't know our story. That's right. <laughs> because that's right. everybody, I think that's just a part of becoming one. Yes. You know, you, there's, I mean, you could take two independent people. Very different. Yeah, yes. two very different, different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And God says, okay, you got to merge now. That's you need to right. be one because this is giving me the glory. That's right. Mm. That's right. We still have very different experiences, very, good. Mm -hmm. very different temperaments very different ways that we perceive and feel and see things. And so we have to always continue to honor our differences mm. as well uh, as a couple. And so I think that, that that's a huge part of it is, uh, is recognizing that God created us as two very unique individuals. Mm -hmm. And when you mm -hmm. say honor our differences, that just in, in my spirit, I felt, and honor your vows. That's right. And then when you took the that's vows, right. you took it to God yeah. concerning the other person. Absolutely. And mm. I always, always remind couples of that, that the, the covenant was first between yourself and God. Mm and then between yourself and your spouse. Yes, yes. It, so, so you always have to go back and revisit that relationship first with God and then your spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if someone's feeling married and alone, and, and in fact, viewers, yeah. there's a book called Married and Alone mm -hmm. that talk about and some of the things that Reese hit mm -hmm. that you, you recognize first. You, yeah. said, you said to be honest. You That's gotta right. be honest with mm -hmm. yourself. You recognize what's going on yeah. and then you you pray. You That's talked right. about that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, you actually, you mentioned, um, you said about emotional, try to open up, keep yes. that going. Mm -hmm. So in, in this particular book by Doug Lees, uh, mm -hmm. he says um, that you, you have a feeling, you do f two feelings, and mm -hmm. it's not necessary towards the spouse. It's just that because they have emotional issues, That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need to open up. That's right. That's right. And I think that, you know, we have to give each other uh, permission and encouragement That's to good. share what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. Even if I notice that, you know, my, my spouse is shut down and I really don't want to kind of open up that can of worms, <laughs> you know, That's I right. need to encourage that yes. to let, let yes, you know, let absolutely. her get that off of her heart mm -hmm. and be willing to, to sit in that, mm -hmm. even if it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, to sit in it and, and, and be in that experience mm -hmm. with them because that's mm -hmm. what the attachment is about. You're not alone. Well, yeah. I love that. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is with them in this Amen. marriage. Thank you so much you for being on the show. Thank you. Um, and of course, I always say this because you're good. We mm. got to get you back. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. it. Yep. It has been our objective today to provide key components and strategies regarding healing for your marriage. There is hope for your marriage. Sometimes you must reflect deep within yourself to see what from your background is keeping you from being the best spouse? Pray for your marriage, pray for your spouse, and pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. Be intentional with growing together as a couple. Stay emotionally, spiritually, and physically connected with your spouse. I will say it again, be intentional about growing together. Here at Right Decisions, it is our objective to leave you with tools and strategies to make your life easier and more successful. There is no right decision without making the best and ultimate decision of all times. That is making Jesus Christ your Lord. If you do not know the Lord, why don't you make Jesus Lord of your life today and invite him into your heart? Just simply believe your heart that Jesus died for your sins, repent of your sins and confess out loud, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Now when Jesus returns, you'll be able to join him. Thank you so much for tuning in to Right Decisions, a show with a positive message. If you'd like to contact me, email me at twos to make right decisions at gmail.com. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye for now.